real interested how both teams handle the crowd. I think managing emotions is going to be critically important for both Nebraska and Creighton here this evening. Well, let's check out the starting lineups. And when you look at the starting lineup, you're going to see no one who has played in this game with fans in the stands. Creighton's freshman Ryan Nemhard, though, seems to have the makeup to handle the road crowd. Yeah, he's the reigning Big East freshman of the week, and there's going to be a lot on his plate to handle the ball and handle the environment. Gavin Games. This game played every year, but it's not beating Illinois at home in Milwaukee and then Providence going to Madison, Wisconsin and knocking off the Badgers. So an exciting start to what is an exciting week of Big East and Big Ten matchups. Great controls the tip, and here we go in Lincoln with Ryan Nemhard bringing it up. McDermott said he wanted to try to get Ryan Kulkbrenner touches, number 11 in blue, try and get it inside of the big top. This is Arthur Kaluma, athletic, talented. He's going to be really good in this system. Here's Nemhard trying to get around Derek Walker. Nemhard the skip, tough pass, and tipped out by Alonzo Bird. Outstanding energy and effort from Nebraska, but now you got to finish the possession. Six seconds on the shot clock, got to have great communication here. Keep an eye on O'Connell, wheeling around and coming through an elevator screen. Ryan Hawkins to inbound, and the bounce taken away. McGowan's throws it off the chest of Alex O'Connell. Nebraska defense, big, big start. We'll take another look at it. You said it. Just locked in. That's got a report. And a little insult to injury throwing it off of O'Connell's head, but couldn't have asked for a better defensive possession to get things started for Fred Hoiberg's crew. Now, can they convert that defense into offense? They'll enter it to Verge, extended to the block, spinning on them hard. This is Mayan in the corner for three, and he drops it his first of the year. Outstanding find from Alonzo Verge, a guy who's wired to score, collapsed the defense, and finds a shooter. Man, first three of the year. Nemhart on the drive to O'Connell and Burns with a block for a foul. The crowd doesn't like it, but that was a great basket cut from Alex O'Connell off of penetration from Ryan Nemhart, who does an excellent job breaking down the defense. And coming as a shooter, you have to vary your times where you're spotting up from three and cutting off the ball. To the line goes the Duke transfer, Alex O'Connell, off to a tremendous start this season, averaging 16 and a half points per game. O'Connell spent three seasons at Duke, and then last year became eligible about halfway through the year, and he's kind of lived in this world, Kevin, where he's a bench guy where he doesn't know if he's going to get 10 minutes or 25 minutes. He doesn't know if he's going to get two shots or 12 shots, but this year he can finally, finally settle in. Paul Brenner couldn't handle the rebound. Nebraska will bring it up the floor. Let's see if Alonzo Burge can continue to think about setting the table for his teammates like he did on that first possession. May in again. No, but a foul is called. Kaluma closing out on the shooter and Mayan to the line 4-3. This is reminiscent of a game last year against Rutgers where Mayan came out and was on fire with four consecutive threes. When Fred Hoiberg understands the importance of Mayan. And you see him drawn up a set after he knocked one down. A little curl and a pin down, which is difficult for your four-man to defend. I really feel like Mayen unlocks this offense when he's knocking down shots at that four spot. Boy, does that floor get really spread, and your ball screen coverages become really difficult. Nebraska lost the opener to Western Illinois. Lat Mayen did not play in that game. Came back against Sam Houston, went 0 for 4. This is not only his first three, his first points. He's got all five of Nebraska's points. He's dealing with a bum ankle. And sometimes as a shooter, you need your wheels feeling good. Your timing on your jump shot, the rhythm, the confidence. So you'd imagine as Mayen rounds into form, he'll start knocking down shots more with more regularity. Here comes Nemhunt, freshman from Ontario. Nick mentioned it, Big East freshman of the week this week. The two conferences freshman of the week in this game. Bryce McGowan's the Big Ten freshman of the week. And to shoot for Kaluma against the freshman of the week and he takes him right to the hole. Pretty simple. Just a high-low action but Kaluma's got the option to drive and he took it. Kaluma's got a great physical stature to him and Bryce McGowan's is pretty skinny and he was able to get in the lane and make it happen. Trey McGowan. 
Walker the attack, the older brother of Bryce, left that one short. Rebound, Walker able to chase it down. Ten to shoot. Inside, Walker put it on the deck. Blocked by Cutbrenner. And the Jays go the other way. Splits two defenders all the way to the rim for an easy deuce. It's Fred Hoiberg's number one concern. Transition defense. Getting back, stopping the ball, getting organized. And O'Connell gets all the way to the rack. Now it's Burge on the attack. And Burge can't connect. Had the ball in his hands, but kicked it out to McGowan. Man, with the fake. Now Burge again. Burge. Side, trying to make something happen. That could be good or bad for Nebraska. Fine line with him. Now, the alley oop. McGowan's no, but the putback is there. And Creighton on a 6 0 run to grab the lead. Well, and Fred Hoiberg can't be happy. That's back to back transition opportunities where there just wasn't a whole lot of urgency from Nebraska getting back and getting sorted out. But good job by Creighton to establish the pace of this game. You know what Craig McDermott's teams want to do, they want to run. McGowan's inside trying to wrap it around the walker, but Creighton says none of that. Nemhard up the floor all the way. And the end finger roll is no good, but a foul. Wave off the follow jam. That one didn't count. But the foul on Mayen may send free throws for Creighton. Well, Ryan Kalkbrenner, the tallest guy in the floor, gonna have to defend the rim. And there he does. Derek Walker gets his spot. And it, all three of these transition situations, Nebraska just didn't do a good job containing the ball. O'Connell gets all the way to the basket. Same thing with Nemhard here. No one stops the ball, Kevin. That's the first order of business. You have to stop the ball handler. And Creighton was able to get all the way to the rim multiple times. Wilhelm Breidenbach on for Latin and who is out now with two fouls. So the only Husker to score and he sits down with two fouls. Jays, for a moment, had six on the floor. Arthur Kaluma was not aware that he was being asked to head to the bench. <laughs> Chatting with assistant Alan Huss. <laughs> uh, it, it's interesting, though, with, with, with man with two personal fouls. Now, Breidenbach, I think he's more of a five-man, but he's skilled enough to play the four. So this isn't necessarily a lineup that Fred Hoiberg wants to play, but he might have to stick with it. Is Burge. Step back jumper for Burge. That's not going to go. Walker punches the rebound out of bounds. One of the things with Alonzo Burge, he can be a dynamic scorer, but sometimes that ball gets stuck with Alonzo Burge. But at, at Arizona State, he was, was his the primary ball handler point guard. And now he's having to be the primary ball handler point guard and set the table. He's wired to score, but he's got natural passing instincts. He's got to find a way to balance those two things and thinking about setting the table for his fellow Huskers. Well, of the Huskers 16 assists belong to Burge. A little trouble for Ryan Hawkins, able to get rid of it to O'Connell. His three falls and the Jays on a 10-0 run. This has been a series of monster Creighton runs, usually in the second half when they've put big runs on the Huskers. It's a great start for Creighton, coming into a hostile environment, delivering the first blow. Bryce McGowan's the three, trying to stop the run, he cannot. Fiesel with the rebound, Keyshawn Fiesel, the transfer from McNeese State. Nice to see Sharif Mitchell, number four in blue, on the floor. He's been nursing a groin injury. This is his first action of the year. He is the one backcourt Blue Jay that does have some experience. He averages six points per game in his time against the Huskers. Nemhart, the lob, a little bit off the mark. McGowan's able to pluck the rebound, and now the freshman on the move. He'll step back for a three. That's short, and the rebound ripped down by Fiesel. Nebraska has gone ice cold outside of Mann. 10-0 run continuing for the Blue Jays. Hawkins, rotation to O'Connell. How about another triple? 14-5, a 13-0 Blue Jay run, and we haven't even played five in Lincoln. How about Alex doing what his coach has really pleaded with him to do and that set the table for his teammates but then it's been all one-on-one -on -one and quick shot sense and man gets straddled with two personal fouls and now Trey McGowan's running the point oh oh all the way to the rim attacking and draws the contact and the foul and Kaluma and McGowan's exchanging some looks as Kaluma nearly got himself in the poster 
Well, Kevin, you've watched Trey McGowan's play quite a bit. This is an elite athlete, and he's already had multiple in traffic dunks this season. And the reality is Trey McGowan's, I think, is best suited when he's playing off the ball and thinking about scoring. But you might have to slide him over and have him play some point guard a little bit to see if he can kind of springboard this offense and move it. Second foul on Arthur Kaluma, so Kaluma will sit down, the highest rated recruit for Coach McDermott. And McGowan's good at the line to stop that great run. This end is where Nebraska needs to figure something out. Great was 3 of 30 from 3 in the first half this year. They're 2 for 2 tonight. Yeah, got to do a better job guarding the ball and staying attached to the three-point line. But a lot of it, I think, starts for Nebraska with communication. Sharif Mitchell. Put it over to Ryan Hawkins. Just bounce inside. Good control by Fiesel, who gets the bucket. And he'll go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. The ball movement was outstanding for the Blue Jays. Well, that's the thing. Creighton... Does a good job penetrating off the ball movement. That ball got swung around, and Ryan Hawkins at the four spot, capable of putting it on the deck and making plays. Hawkins has got great feel, and Keyshawn Fiesel, Greg McDermott, you asked him, who has surprised you so far? And he said, Keyshawn Fiesel. He has been outstanding in terms of a transfer portal pickup at that five spot. He's a guy who's a little bit better than they thought he would be, and they thought he was going to be pretty good, and, you know, Jalen Courtney Williams, who's now on the Creighton bench, was with him at McNeese State, and now is here. So he had a little insight into helping him get here. The skip to C.J. Wiltshire. He can launch from out there, and he hits the three. That's a great pass, though. That's Trey McGowan's sucking in the defense and thinking about making a play for a teammate. And Wiltshire, the Xavier transfer, certainly not shy to let it fly. First field goal in almost five minutes for Nebraska. If Creighton can answer Mitchell running into Eduardo Andre. Crowd wanted to travel. They didn't get it. Nine yeah, to shoot. I think Mitchell got away with one. Here's Nemhard. The skip into the corner to Hawkins. His three pinballs out. And Eduardo Andre with the rebound. How good was he against Sam Houston in his first action? Of the year? I don't think Nebraska wins the game without Andre against Sam Houston. Here's Andre inside. Ball knocked out of his hands by Nemhard. And the Jays looking to run with Mitchell. Sharif Mitchell looping to the other end. A whistle and an offensive foul. Casey Tome Naga, the newcomer, one of many for the Huskers, taking the charge. Well, Sharif Mitchell, he, he kind of looks like a guy that has only practiced 30 minutes over the last handful of weeks because of that groin injury. He just seems like he doesn't have his legs underneath him. Should have traveled in the last possession there. Barrels into Tome Naga for the charge. So... Little bit of rust for Mitchell, but that's a good play from Tommy Naga setting his feet, taking a charge. There's Alonzo Verge around the Andre screen, gets into traffic, feeds it back to Wiltshire, and Wiltshire driving in draws the foul. And CJ Wiltshire attacking, aggressive. Huskers will inbound. One thing I like about Nebraska's team is they bring firepower off the bench. Tommy Naga, Wiltshire, those guys are shot makers and they're aggressive when they come in, so if you're a little flat, they can come in there and change the complexion of the game. See Sharif Mitchell, he's been bothered by that groin injury for the last several weeks. Hasn't practiced hardly at all as Creighton steals the inbound. Oh, pass ahead. Nimhard running to the other end of the floor. Bucket and the foul. Took it right at Wiltshire. And he made him pay a chance at a three-point play. Wow. That's as good of a finish as you'll see in the open floor with the head of steam from a little guy that doesn't play above the rim to much eye moves the ball away from the shot blocker doesn't shy away from the contact and put it up softly that's big time from ryan nemhart a three-point play complete he has six and a 19 10 lead for the blue jays he seems pretty comfortable handling the environment early that big run kind of took this crowd down and notch. Verge the step back at the elbow. That's off the heel, no good. One and done of the Huskers. Verge 0 for 4 tonight. Trying to pick the pocket of Nemhart. Ball loose on the floor in the scramble. Verge has it. Huskers on the run. No numbers. Doesn't matter. The three way off the mark for Tomei Naga. And Creighton the other way. This crowd really reacts to Tomei Naga. Alexander back out to Nemhart. His three is good. 22 to 10. Blue Jays by a dozen. 
You figured threes were going to loom large, and they have. Creighton's been streaky this year, and they're feeling it early. And Bird is not feeling it at all, unless it is cold. 0 for 5 from the floor. Here come the Blue Jays. Nemhart again. Nemhart barely ripples the twine. 25 to 10. What a start on the road for the young Jays. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And you can see Fred Hoiberg just screamed at Burge to move, it, move the ball. They watched film on Sunday. It was such a big emphasis for Fred Hoiberg. But unfortunately, a foul called here. Unfortunately, it just isn't moving the way he wants it to early. Well, how about Ryan Nemhard, Kevin? He has come in and been fantastic. Watch Burge lose sight of his man. He uh, sucks in, helps. Easy kick out. Nemhard knocks it down. And then again, when I watch Nebraska, they have multiple communication breakdowns off the switches, and that gets them scrambling, and Nemhard's able to be the beneficiary of that, knocking down two long-range jumpers. What a start for the freshman Nemhard. What a start for the Blue Jays, who were 3 of 30 from 3 in the first half. Until tonight, they are 4 of 5 from behind the arc. Now, all of them have been off of assists, too. They've been good threes. Last block, long with the left hand. Rebound in the corner to Hawk. And the Jays with Mitchell running the point. Bring it up. 9-0 run. Almost became 12-0. That was halfway down, and it pinballed out to the Huskers. But Nebraska's just got to do a better job getting sorting out, sorted out in transition. That's one pass, wide open three. Bryce McGowan at the logo. Short on the jumper. Rebound O'Connell. Nebraska 2 of 14 from the floor. Downs has to get going. He has to score for Nebraska. Talk about a guy that's averaging 27 a game through the first two games. On the attack, Alexander. That one off the mark. Rebound tipped out. It'll stay on this end of the floor. And a timeout on the floor. 11.09 remaining in the first half. Fred Hoiberg looking to do something to stem this Creighton tie. I can't believe she's gone. I really did think you'd be the first to go, Amy. I'm so sorry. I promise I will be next. Colleen would really like that. This holiday season, remember the trick. The one that lets you skip the line and get your finger licking chicken finger licking quick. It's finger licking quick. New upgraded Axe body wash. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing, baby? Keeps you clean. Smelling refreshed for 12 hours. Michigan State takes on Butler. Then, St. John's battles Indiana. The Gavit tip-off games continue Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern on FS1. Designed specifically for pet parents, the Bissell Crosswave X7 Cordless Pet Pro Multi-Surface Cleaner vacuums and washes at the same time. It freshens area rugs and tackles tough, stuck-on messes in turbo pet mode. Powerfully cleaning sealed hard floors. No surprise, it's our best crosswave for homes with pets. And other mess makers, too. Whatever stage of pet parenthood you're in, Bissell helps you live in the moment, not the mess. At Skill, innovation has always powered us. And now Skill runs on advanced lithium battery technology. Delivering longer runtime, maximum power, and five-minute recharging. Powering your tools and your tech. Skill. The tools to do the job. The technology to do it better. It's very important to keep the name Dave Gavitt alive. Uh, you know, not only for what he did for the Big East, but for what he did for college basketball in general. And for someone like me growing up to watching the Big East uh, in its prime, it was, uh, you know, it's a name that's synonymous with college basketball. Well, and there's no doubt that Dave Gavin, who loved basketball and loved the Big East, would be delighted with how the Big East reformed and reconstituted itself 
and is back as one of the nation's premier, premier basketball conferences. Yeah, no doubt. When it reformed, I think there were a lot of people that wondered what the new iteration of the Big East was going to be all about. But it is without question one of the premier basketball conferences in all of the nation. So Mr. Gavitt would be absolutely thrilled. Mitchell with six to shoot back out to Trey Alexander O'Connell back on the floor free throw line jumper rattles home for O'Connell who has 11 the run is 11 Two years ago the Jays put a 40 to 9 run on the Huskers last year It was a 30 to 8 second half run. How about a 27 to 10 start tonight? But, and, and Nebraska's got to get it going defensively here Andre had that one pop out, one and done again. Blue Jays up the floor. Right now, Creighton's getting any shot they want. He's getting layups and wide open threes. Mitchell, the step back at the elbow is good. 29 to 10. We're not even halfway through the first half. It, it is impressive the poise at which Creighton is playing with. There's a lot of young, new guys playing right now, and they are comfortable in what was a hostile environment, but the crowd has been present and silent. Comes inside, wanted to call, didn't get it, gets it off underneath the man, his shot blocked away. And the Blue Jays on the run. 13-0 run. The Huskers have made one shot in their last six I think Hulkman has done a good job disrupting things at the rim. O'Connell, three, up, this time off. And the rebound saved for Nebraska. Close, but McGowan's able to get the play. Where can Nebraska go right now to stem the tide? Find some flow offensively. I just think they got to use each other. There's Andre inside, challenging Kalkbrenner up to the challenge. Blue Jays on the run. Mitchell to the other end. Open three, O'Connell. And the rebound to Wiltshire. Nebraska's dodging bullets right now. Those are wide open good looks for the Jays. Quick three for Wiltshire, and it falls, giving this crowd a something to cheer about can CJ Wiltshire spark a Husker rally still plenty of time Wiltshire's a confident guy and he's going to continue to let it fly and I think if you're Nebraska you're going to continue to work screens for him look for Wiltshire Chance at a three-point play. What do you think, Kevin? It looked like Nebraska, it was close. As Bryce McGowan's watching him rotate, might have been moving. Those are such bang-bang calls, but that's pretty good nifty footwork from the seven-foot-one Kalkbrenner to be able to catch and get it up off the window through the contact. First foul on Bryce McGowan's Kalkbrenner to the line. He's got his first two of the night. But Kalkbrenner's put his fingerprints all over this thing, mainly putting his fingerprints on the basketball. He's got two blocks. He's altered a bunch of shots at the rim. But right now, Nebraska just is not doing anything to make Creighton uncomfortable in the half court. They're able to run their sets, get the shots they want, the looks they want. And you give a team with this kind of offensive skills that sort of diet, you're going to be in trouble. Kobe Webster making his Husker season debut. Gets on the scoreboard. This is a guy who might be able to help get that ball moving. Around. Yeah, you talk about a super senior. He's one of the top 25 active scorers in the nation. And this guy's a thousand point scorer. They need his buckets right now. Hawkins. Going to answer Kalkbrenner offensive rebound. Here's O'Connell into the paint. Floater short. Caught by Hawkins. And he finishes it. That rebounding bugaboo reared its head for Nebraska. They've struggled to clean up the defensive glass. Man, playing with two fouls. Paul Kerner came out and challenged him. Walker there to save it. Here's Richard. Bryce McGowan. Open look for three. Cannot connect. And Creighton with the ball. Bryce McGowan still with zero points. 16-0 points in the paint as O'Connor is stepped on the side and turn over back to the high school. But the Jays dominating inside, dominating outside, and dominating on the scoreboard of 33-15.
this. It starts on defense. I know Nebraska struggled. They're only 4 of 22 from the floor. But they got to string together some stops. And then you heard Fred Hoiberg say, make better decisions in terms of moving it and shot selection. I think that's been as big of an issue as anything. Just haven't had great decision-making in terms of the shots they've elected to fire up. Maybe Webster a little bit frustrated there as he was trying to find somewhere to go with it. Well, this is a guy that's got to get going. I mean, Bryce McGowan's needs to get on the floor. That'll do it. That'll do it. A little backdoor cut. Understanding O'Connell trying to face guard. Pushing out. Hey, that'll get McGowan's rolling. Talking about a guy that scored 29 points in his last game. He needs to score for Nebraska. Well, he's been in double figures not in every game, but in every half of every game. He has two now in this one. Hawkins, the skip out to Mitchell for the deep three. And the rebound to Walker. What was it Fred Hoiberg said? Get three stops. Well, they got one. They scored on the first possession. Can they score after that stop? Webster looking for somewhere to go with it. It's Mayan. McGowan's will back it out with 12 to shoot against O'Connell. McGowan's going to work driving inside. Left the left hand short. And the rebound for Nemhar. It's just a strength thing for McGowan. He's got to a spot but got knocked off it. Mitchell, and that's a turnover. Second time we've yeah. seen a Blue Jay step on the sideline. But you see, watch O'Connell face up and try to fight over that screen and just a direct line cut from Bryce McGowan. So take another look at it on time, on target. And he's got to get rolling, Kevin. And right now, there's got to be a balance of McGowan staying aggressive without forcing it, but the other Huskers trying to make a play for him. Headhunt screen him. Kobe Webster trying to get a piece of the paint and spray it out to him. He's the first five-star recruit in the history of Nebraska basketball. A lot rides on his shoulders, fair or not, for the freshman. Absolutely. Walker has poked free. On the back left, there's McGowan to the rim. Good ball movement, and they found him on the baseline. And poor discipline from Alex O'Connell. Thought he could collect the loose change after Fiesel knocked it up in the air. O'Connell's got to stick with the most electrifying score on the floor, and that's Bryce McGowan. Two buckets, two stops. Albeit one of unforced error by Creighton. Uh, if Nebraska can get this thing to under 10 going into half, they got to feel really good about it. Fiesel leaves it short. Long rebound into the hands of Derek Walker. And now Webster up the floor. <laughs> playing with two fouls. Got him early. Walker lost the handle on the dribble and it's scooped up by Alexander. In transition, O'Connell. The skip to Nemhart. Runner for Nemhart. Strong. Down to the board. Huskers have numbers if they hurt. McGowan to the other end against Alexander. Got it to roll down. And now a 12-point game and the crowd showing signs of life. You get the feeling in this building, Nick, that it wouldn't take High lose record, it's lasted a long time. It may not last through this year. I think that guy's definitely got at least a 30-burger in him at some point this year. But he, you knew he wasn't going to be quiet for long. And what you're frustrated about if you're Creighton is they've kind of gifted him a couple of baskets. And a turnover by the Blue Jays off to timeout. Not what Greg McDermott was looking for. Well, this is five with Webster running the point has executed better. Lutcher with a three around the screen from Breidenbach. And look who's back in the ballgame. Just what Fred Hoiberg talked about in the huddle. String together some stops, make better decisions, shooting the ball, and you'll erase this deficit. O'Connell, the bounce inside. Fiesel got McGowan's in the air, and that'll be number two on Bryce McGowan's. And you see what Fred Hoiberg wants to do in here. But take another look at C.J. Wilcher coming off the screen. Again, this guy is aggressive. He is a former top 100 recruit. Didn't see a lot of playing time at Xavier, but he can really shoot it. He's come in, and you wonder where Nebraska would be without Wilcher. I mean, nine points off the bench, made all of his three-point attempts. He's been vital. Ten points in his first two games total this year before the nine tonight. McGowan sits down. Casey Tomenaga on the floor now for the Huskers. And Alexander going past Wilcher to the rim, and that'll snap the 9-0 run. Great hard attack from Trey Alexander. He's the, the top 60 recruit. State of Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year, a freshman. 
looked explosive there. So much young talent on both of these teams. Two highly ranked, highly thought of recruiting classes. Breidenbach, part of that highly ranked recruiting class. He can't get that one to go. And Nemhard able to save it for Blue Jay. Boy, Paul Brenner has done an incredible job altering shots at the 10. And that'll be an offensive foul on Nemhard. His first and a timeout on the floor. The Blue Jays' lead was cut to single digits. They'll take the 11-point lead to the bench. Points in any of his 126 games at Maryland has done it in three straight games <laughs> with Marquette. Trent Frazier, 23 points in the loss. Nate Watson was terrific last night. Brad Davison in a losing effort for the Badgers. Well, it's good to see Shaka Smart get that crowd into it. Talk about Havoc being back. Looks pretty good, especially down the stretch defensively. That's a good win for Marquette. Drive by. Shot clock backs it out to Webster. The three up and down for Kobe Webster. And Nebraska with an eight. And Kobe Webster has been outstanding. That back got better just in time. First action of the year. He's been much needed. Huskers started two of 18 from the floor. They've hit seven of their last 11 to climb back into this one. Ten on the shot clock. Three minutes to play first half. Paul Brennan against Breidenbach. Three seconds on the shot clock. Lost it. Got it back. And this is from point blank range. Boy, Paul Brennan is going to miss that shot very often. Breidenbach set three. Okay. His first as a Husker. Hawkins into the corner. The three from O'Connell won't go. There's Webster again. He's involved in everything, Nick. He has been outstanding off the bench. They needed his steady hand, and he's provided it. Three. Two games, eight points in seven minutes. Good ball movement, good leadership. A two-point game, Creighton led by 19 in this half. They needed someone, Nebraska needed someone to come in and run the show at point guard. And Kobe Webster's been that guy. That part. Has to back it out, 10 to shoot. Looking on the baseline. Oh, he got to the top runner for the two-hand flush. That's just great job by Ryan Nebhardt keeping his dribble alive, being under control, just probing the defense and dropping it down to Culpern. That's a big play from the freshman. Right up top. Tough drive. That's handled the shovel and a good block by Trey Alexander. He got a piece of the shot from Tome Nogan. Nebraska's got shots at the rim that just been altered. And that will go the other way. It's an offensive foul on Ryan Kalkbrenner, who is first, team seventh. Kevin, something Ryan Nemhart does an incredible job of is keep his dribble alive, especially along that baseline. You can find cutters. He found O'Connell earlier. There he finds Kalkbrenner late in the shot clock. It's just poise beyond his years from the freshman Ryan Nemhart. There's Webster in a four-point game. Breidenbach, three. Short this time. And battling for the rebound, Keon Edwards. Webster hits it again! One-point game! Kobe Webster! This is incredible! And the foul is going to be called on the drive. Nemhard bumped at the elbow. Kobe Webster is on fire. Look how quickly he puts this up. You know you're feeling it. When this thing is up immediately, this is a big-time score. He was a second-team All-Summit League player at Western Illinois, and he's had to settle into a bench role. But you know it doesn't take much for him to tap into that. I'm the man person inside of him that was prevalent at Western Illinois, and they have needed him badly, and he has delivered. He is four for four from the floor. He may not be in that bench role for long. <laughs> what? Again, Alonzo Burgess struggled. Fred Hoiberg has talked a ton about needing a point guard to really set the table and get Nebraska to execute, and Webster's come on the floor and done that. 
The super senior has been super launching again this time off. He's feeling it. <laughs> you know it. That's a heat check right there. 13 second difference between game and shot clock as the Blue Jays navigate with a three point lead. Here's Nemhart. They led by 19 turnovers scooped up by Wiltshire. Huskers can hold for the final shot. Webster saying hold. Webster saying hold. Edward saying three. No good. O'Connell and now the Jays can have for the last shot. Now it's a good clean look, but probably a mental mistake from Keon Edwards. He needed to hold for the last shot. We'll see if it bites Nebraska here. Nemhart bumped by Breidenbach, and that'll be a foul that'll send Nemhart to the line as Breidenbach picks up his second personal foul. So not only does he get his second, but the Jays have a chance to score with free throws coming for Nemhart, or at least one. It's just poise, mis decision-making. That's a mistake from Keon Edwards, and it cost Breidenbach a foul, and that's that could loom large as this game wears on because now your front line guys and Mayan and Breidenbach both got two. Front end good for Nemhart. Oh, oh, he's had 15 points, five rebounds, two assists for the freshman. Well, Fred Hoiberg's talked a ton about his team's handling adversity. I can't tell you how impressed I am with how Nebraska's responded. Second free throw, no good. Fox running down the wall. But not long enough, but a rally by Nebraska will send their fans to the concession stands with a smile on their faces. Kobe Webster with 11 off the bench. Okay. Kobe Webster will start the second half on the bench after he led Nebraska on that 21-7 run to close the first half. Alonzo Verge, who struggled mightily in the first half. Fred Hoiberg showing some confidence in the transfer from Arizona State. And Verge going to work immediately, and Verge fortunate not to turn that one over. Verge just got to take a deep breath. He's a talented guy. He was the Pac-12 sixth man of the year two years ago. He can play. So can Wiltshire, but inside, really good defense by Ryan Hawkins. Boy, I've been impressed with Creighton's ability to contest and block shots at the rim. Here's Nembhardt. Get the Jays set up in the offense with O'Connor. I, I thought Creighton lost their poise in the final seven minutes. And Nebraska had a lot to do with that. But Creighton's got to get back to ball movement and taking the right shots like they did to start the game. Arthur Kaluma only played three minutes with foul trouble in the first half with four to shoot. Kaluma can't get it done inside. And the rebound kicks out to Verge. And we'll see if Kaluma can get involved. You only play three minutes of foul trouble, you can really be out of sorts. Here's Mayen on the drive. The skip to Wiltshire for three in the corner and an air ball caught by Alex O'Connell. Remember, Creighton started this game 29-10 to 10 before Nebraska got it going again. Kalkbrenner forcing that one over the front of the rim. Again, transition defense for Nebraska is going to continue to be a really important factor in this game. In the first half, Nebraska didn't do a good job getting sorted out in there. Kalkbrenner with early post position and gets a layup. Back to the cup. Wiltshire is fouled on his way down the baseline. Pretty good ball movement there. Big from Walker to Wiltshire. Two two foul on Nembhardt, his second. Well, something Nebraska's done a good job is going back door. They've, they've hit numerous back door plays. Bryce McGowan's got back-to-back -back baskets. I think in some ways that kind of springboarded the comeback. But Creighton has really tried to press out of that three-point line. And sometimes you leave yourself vulnerable to getting back door cut. There's Verge with Nembhardt on his hip trying to get to the scoring top. Gets his own rebound, puts it back up, and that one rattles home. First bucket for Verge as he gets the offensive board. But you see Verge took ball fakes and Kalkbrenner bit on him. He looked away and that allowed Verge to get it up off the window, but maybe that'll settle Verge into the game a little bit. He's a prolific scorer as Kalkbrenner got behind a Walker. Really good entry pass from that corner. Kevin Craig McDermott before the game told us we got to get the ball to Kalkbrenner more. Got to get more touches. They're a good set and a good entry pass from Hawkins. And Kalkbrenner's done a good job setting post position. Here's Verge again into the paint. Verge runs it up with the right hand. Back-to-back -back buckets for Verge in a four-point game. On the push, O'Connell wraparound pass. Hawkins pirouettes and Walker blocks it away. Hawkins stays with it, lobs it back into play, and a foul is called. Walker fouling Nemhart. It's a heck of a hustle play from Ryan Hawkins. 
I mean, you're going to see a lot of white jerseys and only one blue jersey. And the blue jersey comes up with it and is able to at least save it and give a teammate a chance. That's a big-time effort play from Ryan Hawkins. In his sixth year playing basketball for Northwest Missouri State, MVP in the Division II national title game as Alonzo Verge makes a defensive play. Possession arrow will keep it on this end, but the offense may be starting to spark the entire game of Alonzo Verge. Right. Couldn't have said it better. I think he's just starting to settle in. Saw the ball go through the hoop a few times. They're a good instinctual defensive play to go for a steal. That's the thing, you want Verge to be himself. But just within the confines of how Nebraska's executing, they're playing offensively and defensively. It's a hard balance. Nemhart trying to shake Verge defensively. Six on the shot clock. Nemhart's going to work all the way to the rim. That will not go, and may have the rebound. What great take. Good change of speed. Is Verge again. Does he attack, or does he move the ball? Let's see. He attacks. Nothing there. Yeah, see, these are the possessions where Nebraska's in trouble. It's just one guy pounding it. It stayed on one side. And a foul called on Paluma. That is his third. But that just happens too often, where Virgil just pound it and pound it and hold the ball. The one thing Kobe Webster does is he just moves it. He's a ball mover. Now, he did take some tough threes, but those were off of ball movement. And... Burgess just got to balance that. Again, you're talking about a guy that didn't play point guard at Arizona State, and he's wired to score. So there's going to be a process for him. Mayan. One-on-one -on -one against Hawkins and a takeaway. Nemhart up the floor, bumped by Verge, and Verge picks up his first. Probably not the worst foul in the world because Nemhart, if he gets past Verge, has got an easy two. See, if I'm Alonzo Verge, I'm thinking I got to get Bryce McGowan's a bucket. I'm looking for McGowan's. I'm trying to suck his defender in and kick it out to him. M McGowan's was able to score a little bit, and it kind of propelled the comeback. But as a point guard, those are the things you got to think about. you got to be able to set everything up for your teammates and understand what your team really needs. And what Nebraska needs is McGowan's to score. And how difficult is that when you've not been that point guard before? It's really hard. Good feet inside. Working down low. Walker gets the rejection. Paul Brenner. Swatted by Walker. There's Mayen. The trailer. Nothing there against Colt Brenner. It seems like there's a concerted effort to get Colt Brenner. About a three contested in front of the Nebraska bench. We got a one-point game. Job by Mayen. Understanding he's got Colt Brenner on him. Take him out of the three-point line where he's not comfortable and knocking it down. And Connell. Hand off to Hawkins. 15 to shoot. Hawkins backing in. The skip to Nemhart. Eight on the shot clock. The step back for Nemhart. Off the heel. Nebraska could grab a lead for the first time since it was 5-3. Here's McGowan against Mitchell. And an offensive foul on McGowan. That'll light the fire under this crowd. His third and a timeout here in Lincoln. Well, that man was saddled with... A little bit of foul. 1979, and then had the idea to start a college basketball conference. And was Big East commissioner of that conference from 1979 to 1990. His impact goes well beyond the world of college basketball. It is all encompassing to basketball, and thus in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Dave Gavitt would love this atmosphere and would have no problem with a Big East team being in the Midwest like the great Blue Jays are. Absolutely. It's just a celebration of Dave Gavitt's career this whole week. Mitchell, seven on the shot clock, the back out for three. O'Connell can't connect. Rebound poked around. Walker trying to save it. Thrown back into play, and it's scooped up by O'Connell. What hustle underneath by Hawkins. The shot won't go. Rebound Hawkins again. Nemhart, the extra pass. Mitchell. And the Jays with another opportunity thanks to Hustle. Incredible. A wide open in the corner, a set three. Off again, and a rebound by Bird. Well, that would have been one of those backbreaker possessions. Demoralizing for Nebraska, but they dodge a bullet. Bird bounce to McGowan's almost, but a good idea by the Husker point guard to get McGowan's involved. Yeah, and, McGow and McGowan's has done a really good job cutting off the ball. Locked off by May, who came over to help. 
takes it out. 12 to shoot. Seven on the shot clock. Mitchell around the Paul Brenner screen. Oh, the path opening to the rim for the easy two. Good ball movement and patience from the Jays. A lot of handoffs, a lot of ball screens, a lot of cutting. All that movement oftentimes can create lanes, and Mitchell hits one. Burge needing some help. Got Mayen to come up and get it. Mayen a little strong from the foul line. Walker's tipped to the sideline and out of bounds. It'll belong to Kukrik. And Kobe Webster. Back on the floor, along with Eduardo Andre for the Huskers. Trey Alexander returns for the Blue Jays. It was Webster who sparked Nebraska's comeback from 19 down in the first half. See if Kobe Webster can pick up where he left off. He was incredible. How hard is that, though? You get in a groove and then you sit for a while. Well, Especially that's, guys been battling the back. Injury. That's it. And I think he's got to make sure the first shot he takes is a good one. Don't force it, even though you've been hot. Past Webster. Mitchell now, 13 to shoot. Gets to the elbow. The floater and air ball loose underneath for Andre. You see Mitchell's timing is just not quite there with that groin injury. Burge going end to end. Cannot connect. Got a good look, just couldn't finish. And now numbers for the Blue Jays. Nemhart, underhands. Alexander three. Splash. It's a new age three on two break. Instead of going for a layup. Trey Alexander floats out to the three-point line and a perfectly timed pass for Nemhard allows Trey Alexander to just catch and shoot. Feels like a dangerous area right now for Nebraska. Execution. Haven't scored in over three minutes. Andre on the block. Has to get rid of it. Mayen, 10 on the shot clock. Settles for the three. A little strong rebound scooped up by Alexander on the run for the Blue Jays. Up by six and looking for more. Baseline. Oh, oh, oh. Blocked there. Mitchell. Not sure if it was blocked if he just got caught on the rim. You can tell his legs just are not underneath him. Again, he's hasn't played yet, been nursing a groin injury. It's just been a little heavy leg at the end of his drive. Open Webster on air ball. There's the shot you were talking about. The first one on air ball. Mitchell. And Mitchell air nails the pass for Ryan Hawkins. And Greg McDermott trying to collect himself a little bit. This is just Mitchell's playing out of character here. And it's a tall ask. Again, you're talking about a guy that's basically only practiced 30 minutes live over the past handful of weeks with that groin injury. And, and it's hard because he's a guy that relies on his quickness. And you can tell his feet just aren't completely underneath him. Missed a couple of easy ones, a couple of turnovers. I'd like to see Bryce McGowan's get an opportunity here. There's Kobe Webster from the logo. That floater falls for Webster. Four-point game. Some action away from the ball. Instead of ball screens, he gets a down screens. A little bit different look from Fred Hoiberg. Gets Webster free. Trey Alexander. Open three for Nimhard. And that one falls for Nimhard. He's got 18. That's a big shot for the Blue Jays. Well, and a great screen from Alex O'Connell, understanding that they're switching. So he screened his man, Tominaga, because he was going to have to switch out. And Nimhard was wide open. Tominaga wanted to shoot. He always does out there. Here's McGowan's. See if he can get it going. Ten on the shot clock. Working against Alexander. McGowan's playing with three fouls. Gets into the paint. To the rim. No on the scoop. Rebound tipped to the corner and Alexander. Frustrating night so far for McGowan's. Only six points. Alexander the trailer three. Not going to go. Rebound out of bounds. It'll stay on this end of the floor. And a timeout in Lincoln. Blue Jays by seven. 11-15 remaining in the second half. The Gabbitt games. Deal another good one tonight. And seven-point game. This is not what any Nebraska fan wants to see. That's Trey McGowan's on the bench. Has not played since the first half. Came out of the locker room. You can see there's some almost tears in his eyes. He's got crutches and a boot on his right foot. Kobe Webster with the intercept. But Creighton getting back with numbers. Oh, Webster! Oh, the okie doke! Have a night, Kobe Webster! Five-point game. 15 for Webster off the bench. Hawkins, the answer for the Blue Jays with a three. He's been good. He's made effort plays. 
Second chance opportunities for his group. Finally knocks down a three. Hawkins has been steady all game long. And Webster bumped by Nemhart for his third. Kobe Webster's been the reason that Nebraska's come back at this one. Turnover from Nemhart left his feet. And this is that old Steve Smith move. Act like he's going to pull it out. Boom! Hit the gas, go back baseline and lay it in. And then great set. Hard roll from Giselle just created enough traffic to free up Hawkins. And Breidenbach is having a hard time chasing Hawkins on the perimeter. Good X's and O's from Greg McDermott. The official update from Nebraska on Trey McGowan's is he's out for the game with a foot injury, which we had deduced with him in street clothes and a boot on his right foot. Yeah. But that is, if that's a an injury that lingers beyond tonight or the next week or two, that's a devastating blow for Nebraska and for Trey McGowan. Yeah, you're talking about the most veteran player on the team. You're talking about the best defender. And you're talking about a guy who has the chance now to play with his younger brother yes. for the first time in a long time. And now that chance, at least for the moment, is temporarily on hold. Hope everything's okay for him. In the meantime, Webster, Wilcher, Tominaga, these other guards got to step up. Oh, well, Tominaga with wow. a steal. Good hands. Verge, little crossover, gets it to Webster, driving into traffic off the window. Kobe Webster cannot be stopped. It's a great play from Verge, though. Penetration gets a piece of the paint and kicks it. And Webster does the rest. There's Mitchell against Webster. Oh, great feed. Breidenbach there for the block. The follow by Hawkins. Another effort play from the transfer from Northwest Missouri State. That's his fifth offensive rebound for the game. Hawkins has been really good on the glass. Burge trying to lob it underneath to Eduardo Andre, who's fouled, and he'll go to the line. That on Fiesel is first. But this is what Fred Hoiberg wants. Be aggressive, Alonzo Verge, but when you drive it in and... Helps there, kick it out. That created the closeout and the opportunity for Kobe Webster. That's not necessarily going to go in the book for an assist, but Burge created the opportunity for his teammate. And oh, by the way, he's the hottest guy in the gym. And you'd love to see that if you're a Nebraska fan. Burge and Webster communicating, talking, working through it. Kobe Webster has seen so much basketball. He is a six-year senior. The guy's been all over the world. He knows how to play the game. Him out there on the floor has to help Alonzo Verge. And you know he's thinking about the right things. He is taking advantage of that COVID extra year. He said he could feel something special building here. And he wanted to be a part of it. And boy, has he been a part of it here this evening. Brayton's done a good job, though, of just holding Nebraska off at this four or three-point range. And then continuing to get... Hulkbrenner touches is the right place to go. Alexander inside block. Who gets the touch? Hulkbrenner, and he'll go to the line after the foul. Johnny on the spot, or in this case, Ryan on the spot, sends him to the line. Just think Nebraska's had a hard time with Creighton's front line guys. Hulkbrenner, Hawkins in the paint is where Creighton has really dominated this game. So the more you can post up Hulkbrenner, the more Hawkins, who's catching a breather right now, much needed one. The more you can get those guys involved, the better. Two for five at the line this year is Kalkbrenner. But two on the first. He's talking beyond the stop. I'm not sure if it's all the bird. Anybody will listen. But he's got that look of a player who's in the zone. What's that like? Well, your absence of thought and you're just drenched in confidence. Right now, Kobe Webster is praying that he gets an inch of daylight and an opportunity to make a play because he knows something good's going to happen. Third turn to the corner. Back it goes to Andre. Banging into Kalkbrenner. And Kalkbrenner holding his ground. Good defense. Really good defense. Defense without fouling because he showed his hands and slid his feet. Mitchell inside. Nice contest by Eduardo Andre. Long to the other end of Verge on the drive. Out the bucket. Really tough finish from Verge. But a better block from Andre. O'Connell looked close to a walk. If you're in red, you thought he walked. If you're in blue, he held his ground, and it's a five-point game. That's a great under-control jump stop and finish to quiet the crowd right away. 
rim to Wiltshire. Breidenbach, three. No good, and Hulkbrenner there to keep the rebound in the hands of the Blue Jays. as they close into the second half. Mitchell has to back it out. Paluma to the foul. That's a tough jumper. <laughs> he gets it to fall for his second bucket of the night. That's called, I'm a top 50 recruit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a really tough contested jumper. I'm sure you ever saw the basketball. No. <laughs> There's Burge. Webster. Mitchell right out on him. You know Webster's going to pull that trigger. Burge will from the top. Yeah, that's not going to go. Off for the rebound and out of bounds. Off his leg. Nebraska gets a second opportunity after the timeout. Well, how about a little transition offense from Nebraska? Alonzo Burge. Wheeling and dealing. Watch the little in and out and the finish with the left hand. Get one off the window. And you got to be under control when you're on the road. O'Connell, jump stop, floater, James, upset. can't be contained. Cut. I believe with the right tools, we can be everything we want to be. Be all of who you are. A wise person once said, we are defined by what we do when no one is looking. Because the decisions we make every day can change the course of our lives. At Stash, we believe everyone has the power to achieve greater financial freedom one step at a time. Whoever you are, whatever you face, you can decide right now to say no to fear and yes to hope. It's time to invest in yourself. This holiday season, remember the trick. The one that lets you skip the line and get your finger licking chicken finger licking quick. It's finger licking quick. Does your deodorant keep you fresh all day? We put Dove Men deodorant to the test with Nelson, a volunteer that puts care into everything he does. It really protects my skin. It's comfortable and it lasts a long time. Dove Men, 48-hour freshness with triple action moisturizers. Welcome back to Pinnacle Bank Arena. Jay's up seven. Pretty good stuff from Alex O'Connell. Understanding when the defense is switching, you got to screen your own man. So watch O'Connell. He's going to go screen Tommy Naga, and that's going to leave Ryan Nemhard all by himself on the three-point line, and he knocks it down. And understand how you're screening and why you're screening based on how the defense is going. Perfect. Perfect. You watch that execution by Creighton, and then you right in the end of that shot see Kobe Webster telling his guys what they should have been doing to make that play work better for them defensively. That's a big lift to have him on the floor. No question about it. Wilcher curling to the rim. Those were hurt. That's really a nice play by C.J. Wilcher. I like what he's been able to add with 11 points tonight. Yeah, Wilcher's a guy who usually three-point oriented. Looked pretty good going to the basket there. Small lineup for Nebraska on the floor now with McGowan's basically at the four. Can Nebraska rebound is the question. They'll need to there as they get the turnover. Webster doesn't have numbers. And it's tipped out of bounds by O'Connell. That might be a break for Nebraska. I'm not sure that was not going out of bounds even I without O'Connell's help. I think that was going to the fifth row. But it'll be interesting now. Brighton Box played a little bit at the four. Let Mayans played a little bit at the four. Now Nebraska going small. So the floor is going to be spread. You have to take advantage of it on this end of the floor. Very difficult to guard. Wiltshire quick three is short and Falkbrenner the rebound. Greg McDermott 
See if he can't post up one of these glorified guards with either Kaluma or Kalkbrenn. Definite size advantage right now for the Blue Jays. Nemhart trying to bounce it down low and a turnover. That's McGowan's link that got in there and distracted O'Connell a little bit. No doubt about it. It looked like he was beat, but Link, the great eraser. And that's a learning moment for Ryan Nemhart. Sometimes just because a play's called doesn't mean you have to throw the pass. It was a design back door. Probably would have been a tough one to complete, and it ends in a turnover. Probably don't see that one thrown last year with the experience that the Jays had. Burge from the elbow won't go. Walker, nice tip out. Another chance. Wiltshire from the elbow. Contested two. That's off the heel. And the rebound to Alexander. Chester just can't quite get over that pump. They've got it within three. As Nemhard stretches the lead. No, he does not. Ball printer with the catch underneath. He'll stretch the lead and a chance at one more. Kevin, this is the issue with playing small. If you're Fred Hoiberg, no Breidenbach, no Latman at the four. You're really undersized with this lineup, and this is where you're vulnerable. Despite all the white jerseys around the seven foot one Kalkbrenner, size prevails and a chance for a three point play, and Kalkbrenner's letting the crowd hear it. 11 tonight for Kalkbrenner. Three J's in double figures, giving 12 now. And again, an eight-point advantage for Creighton. They've led by as much as 19. Nebraska has not led since it was five to three. Still think getting McGowan's an opportunity. Walker in and out. Wilcher offensive rebound in the putback. CJ Wilcher with 13. Wilcher has been really good. This is the best game of his college career. Crowd wanted an offensive foul. O'Connell with the three. Strong to Wilcher. Greg McDermott kind of shrugged his shoulders at that one. Didn't love it. Wiltshire, a little heat check there that's well short. Just got to balance it if you're Nebraska on when to attack, when to run some offense. That's a quick one from Wiltshire. And neither coach particularly happy at this very moment. Fred Herbert doing this stuff in that shot. Hawkins. As the double comes, O'Connell driving into the teeth of defense. Ten to shoot, Nembhardt three. Rattles home! with a smile for the crowd. He's got 21. That's the difference between extra passes and no extra passes. Great ball moving from Creighton ends in a wide open three. Huskers desperate now for a bucket. Time becoming a factor. Still plenty of it, but 4.38 to go. McCowns has not gotten involved enough. All the bounce. Wiltshire cutting baseline. He's got 15. Webster with a nifty feed. You talk about threading the needle. Wow. How about the backdoor cuts from Nebraska? They got to have, what, 12 points off backdoor cuts? That's been a huge part of their offense, much more so than we've seen from Nebraska. No doubt. I think a little bit by design because, again, Creighton's pressed out on that three-point line. So you got a back cut. Nemhart, 21 points tonight. Four to shoot, going to work. Hips the pass to O'Connell, pulls the trigger on the three, raises the iron to McGowan. the poise, setting the table for everybody from Kobe Webster. Get a mismatch with Hawkins and draws a foul. Boy, the poise from Kobe Webster has been the reason Nebraska's hung around in this game. Down seven. Can the Huskers rally at home? We'll find out. His athleticism is he can score the rock. You see it 10 points a game a year ago, but he's their best perimeter defender. And it's a big void felt for Nebraska Wilcher and Webster have stepped up, but can they finish the job with Trey McGowan's sideline for the final nearly four minutes here? And on a night in which his brother Bryce has run into his first big challenge yeah. as a college basketball player, the highest ranked recruit in the history of Nebraska basketball, held so far to just six points on three for ten shooting. But you know he's staying confident and locked and ready to go. Here he goes. His third. And a one and one opportunity coming up for Nebraska. Uh, and the free throw line could be important down the stretch. And if I'm Nebraska, and it's something they've done really well throughout the season, is really outscore their opponents at the free throw line with the foul situation and the deficit. A great place to get back in this game is attacking the basket and getting to the line. One more. 
Baltimore for Mayan. He started red hot, scored the first five Husker points, then ran into foul trouble in the first half and wasn't a factor after that in the first half. Now at nine. Well, Fred Hoiberg's gone with a bigger lineup. Latman and Breidenbach at the four and the five. Tried to go small, gave up an offensive rebound. So yeah, have a much, much better suited rebounding lineup for Nebraska, but certainly have to put a body on Colt Brenner and Hawkins. Six-point ball game. Corner, Hawkins, the open man, hits the three. Another gigantic shot for the Blue Jays. Great ball movement, great execution. The double team and the scramble out of it. And Nebraska doesn't communicate well enough, and they leave Hawkins. McGowan's trying to work inside against Kalkbrenner, and it's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay on this side. It's a great job inviting the double team for Hawkins. And you know, just move the ball. You penetrate, and... Hulkbrenner gets a piece of Kobe Webster who was matched up with Hawkins and sometimes when you're scrambling You leave yourself vulnerable to getting caught in traffic and Hawkins gets open And knocks down the triple. He's been really good in the second half. I really like his game He's such a good fit for this Creighton program. Webster with the three. That's off and O'Connell with the rebound Greg McDermott can't say enough good things about Ryan Hawkins. Said he is perfect for this team Talk about a Division II transfer multiple national championships at Northwest Missouri State. And he's come through for his team big time here on the road. 31 points and 18 rebounds in the national title game last year. 31 and 18 in the biggest game you're playing. Crazy. The jumper a little strong. Rebound tapped out to Hawkins. Good decision. And again, the offensive rebounds have really hurt Nebraska in the second half. Good tap out from Paul Prenner and Hawkins tracks down his sixth offensive rebound for the game. And bumped by Breisbach with the shot clock at five. Fred Hoiberg can't believe it. They defended that entire clock and then Breisbach stepped out and got pumped for the foul. Hawkins gets credit not only sixth offensive rebound, Nick, but his tenth rebound total. He is the first Blue Jay since Benoit Benjamin mm. to have double-figure rebounds in his first three games of a season That's a guy right there Who was a division two player has the chance to play now in the Big East? His leadership his experience Such a find for this very young Greg McDermott team. Yeah, his intangibles are off the charts and clearly his tangible game is productive as well so When you're in the company of Benoit Benjamin, you're in the right place Certainly from a rebound yes. <laughs> One's a little bigger than the other. Nemhart oh, lost the handle on the ball. Turnover and an unforced error. And then another unforced error by the Huskers. Yeah. Wiltshire gives it back. You just wonder if Nebraska didn't expend so much energy getting back from 19 down because they seem and look a little out of sorts right I now. totally agree. It takes a lot of energy to, cl to climb out of that 19-point hole. But you just saw youth on both ends kind of rearing its ugly head. That's what we'll say. The best thing about his freshman trip <laughs> was sophomore. And then Hart will jump it across. But Nemhard's been pretty good. 21 points, four assists. He's really scored it well. See if he can make a good decision here. They're just going to wind this thing down and get a ball screen. Weave through the lane. Hawkins with the three. And that might do it. That might put it away for the Blue Jays. A 12-point lead with 125 to go. The freshman to the sixth-year senior. Three in the Gavin tip-off games. And the remaining games are the Big East leading. Michigan State Butler, St. John's, Indiana tomorrow night. I've got that one. Ohio State, Xavier, Rutgers, DePaul. Big East has never won it outright in the Gavit games. They're trending in the right direction. Verge with the two to cut it to a 10-point game. And now, out of bounds, knocked out by Webster. So I've certainly seen crazier things than a 10-point deficit getting erased in a little over 60 seconds. So if you're Creighton, you got to be able to handle the ball. You have two timeouts left. You get in the bind. You call a timeout. A little bit fouled with 112 to go. Here's how you hold off a team. Oh, this is so impressive. Creighton, since the 15th minute mark, has not missed back-to-back -back shots. So it's hard for anybody to get on a run. In fact, you can't get on a run. 
since they haven't missed back-to-back -back shots in the last 14 minutes of game time. Yeah, I, I really, the, the execution in the second half, playing inside out, has really served this team well. I think a lot of the second chance opportunities loomed large, but the front line for the Jays, Hawkins and Paul Brenner, their efficiency and imposing their will to the game was tremendous. Bird up to the rim, Kaluma with the block. And the Jays get the loose ball, and Trey Alexander will march to the other end. And they throw. A little high five from Greg McDermott to Arthur Kaluma, who's had a tough night, was in foul trouble. But coming up big with a big block there for his Blue Jay squad. Seven blocked shots tonight for the Blue Jays. Three for Kalkbrenner, a pair for Hawkins. I mean, they've done a lot right in what became a very hostile environment. Yes. Built the same as they always are. They play fast. They want to take threes. But they're a little longer and more athletic than they've been in the past. One Their ability to control the paint and protect the rim has been important. Webster contested three. Kobe Webster, regardless of the outcome of this one, has announced himself as somebody to keep an eye on for Nebraska. He's got 20. And he may need, be needed depending on the injury of Trey McGowan. His role could be even bigger depending on how long McGowan's is out with a foot injury. No question about it. It's a pretty good luxury to have to be able to go to your bench and lean on a guy that's a top 25 active scorer in college basketball. Almost got 100 starts in his career. But hopefully the situation with Trey McGowan's is okay. Because certainly that's a a big blow if, if he is sidelined, but still a little bit of game left here. But the way that Wilcher and McGowan's and Kobe Webster have shot the ball, made a couple threes, this thing gets interesting. Hawkins with 15, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. That'll work. That'll do. Verge. Allen's contested the layup. And a timeout taken by Nebraska. Seven point game, still 41.2 seconds to go. But the night of Ryan Hawkins, if the Jays do hang on, and there's certainly games played. Upcoming schedule, Jays are on their way to the U.S. Virgin Islands yeah. for the Paradise Jam. Then SIU Edwardsville when they return with North Dakota State. Just closing out the non-conference schedule, trying to get some experience for this young team. About to go to 3-0 if they can hang on over the final 41 seconds. Huskers trying to make it tough as Nemhard is fouled by Alonzo Verge. Alonzo Verge Even there, that's a... Hawkins staying calm, inbounding the ball. That was, that was impressive. Huskers coming up. Trying to avoid a 1-2 and two start. Idaho State, Southern Tennessee State, South Dakota. They will be favored in all of those four. And then Big Ten ACC Challenge, they'll go to NC State. It'll be a work in progress with Fred Hoiberg's group. I don't think there's any denying the talent and the pieces are there. But basketball is a chemistry sport, and they got to find a way to piece all that stuff together. I think you saw tonight when the shot selection was right, the ball movement was there. It looked pretty good, but their margin for error is pretty slim when they play a little one-on-one -on -one oriented. And Fred Hoiberg told us that before the game. Certainly got, got to tighten that stuff up. Eight-point ball game. Verge. Trying to get something done here. There's Mayan. Three. In and out. To the sideline. And O'Connell plucks it for the Blue Jays. No foul call. McGowan's thought he got him. Nemhart dribble it out. And this ball game is going to close in Lincoln. And the Creighton Blue Jays about to win it again. They've won nine of the last ten, and Greg McDermott moves to 6-16 six, and four all-time against Nebraska. And Greg McDermott said he wasn't sure what he's going to get from his young group.